Hi, it's Sean Williams with Space Intelligence, and we're at the Wright Brothers Visitor Center in Kale Devil Hills, North Carolina. And right over there in that field is where the Wright Brothers conducted the world's first ever powered flight. Amazing. And over there we have a national monument celebrating the Wright Brothers. Now let me take you inside the Visitor Center to show you a full reproduction of the 1903 flyer and what's so unique and cool about it. This is the 1903 Flyer. Now this one is a reproduction. The original plane that flew here in 1903 is actually housed at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. But this one couldn't be more real to the original. Now it looks quite simple as like the first functioning airplane, but it's actually more complex than you think. And I'm gonna take you through how it worked and what's super unique about it. So off the center of the aircraft to the left is the hip cradle for the pilot. Now if you'll notice in any of the photos or videos of Wilbur or Orville flying the plane, they'll be off the center to the left, and that is where the pilot would sit because since the engine that's off to the right of the center weighs around 200 pounds, an adult male also weighs around 200 pounds, so both of them sitting in the aircraft would actually even out the weight so the plane could fly somewhat straight, which is pretty cool. Now a little bit more about the engine. Up at the top, next or to the left of the pilot at the top of the air aircraft is a cylinder, which is the fuel tank for the engine. And that cylinder could hold about a gallon of fuel. That's it. And then off to the right of the pilot is this linear tank that sits right behind uh, one of the wooden struts. And that tank there is the water reservoir, which serves as cooling for the engine. Now, how does the engine run both of the propellers? If you look at the engine, there's actually a flywheel, which is silver right there. And then connected to that flywheel are two bicycle chains. Now those aren't exactly bicycle chains, they are heavily reinforced. But as you can see, they stick through these black tubes and they go out to both of the propellers. And both of the propellers counter-rotate because that makes sure that the yaw is not affected by the propellers rotating one way, so they're counter-rotating. And also a little bit of an ingenious safety feature, because this thing, even though it's old, had a lot of safety features, is actually that the chain is enclosed in a black tube. So that when the pilot is climbing into the aircraft when it's going, he won't get chopped up or get his clothes get snug inside the uh, chain of the uh, propeller. So actually what's cool about the propeller is this is one of the original, one of the original two on that 1903 flight on December 17th. And this is, the, and this is one of the two that still exists. Exist. Now this one here, you can see it's a little bit worn. It's because after the fourth flight on the day that they made that first flight, as they were bringing it back to their small hangar, a gust of wind took the, uh, took the aircraft and flipped it on its back, completely destroying it. And this is what's left of one of those propellers. And that's just really cool. So let's look at the engine a little bit more. So this is the original engine that was on the 1903 Flyer, which actually flew on the first flight. This is what's left of the engine. And of course, after the fourth flight, the a gust of wind as they were bringing it back to their hangar took the, the um, aircraft and completely destroyed it. And this is what's left of the engine, or what was salvaged. And of course you can see the rest of the pieces all put together. So this is the cover for the crankshaft. And you can see the cylinders inside that would power the flywheel, which would in turn power the chains to power the propellers. And of course you got the combustion chambers on the back, the four of them. And yeah, this is the original engine. This is really it. It's really amazing and very pioneering. And of course it was made up of aluminum alloy, which was different than most engines of the time, which were made of steel. Now let's take a look at the side of the aircraft and talk about how it works and how you control it. So now we're at the side of the flyer. So let's talk a little bit about roll, yaw, and pitch. So to control the pitch of the aircraft where the aircraft goes like this, up and down, we have our elevator at the front. What's cool about that elevator is it's kind of like its own little wing itself because the whole plane is made up of two wings, like a biplane, and so is that elevator, so it can catch more air. And then if you notice, the way to control it is in front of the pilot's hip cradle is actually a lever for him to adjust if he wants to go up or if he wants to go down. 
So that's how the pilot adjusted his pitch. Now, what about roll? So what's interesting about aircraft today is that on the side of their wings, they usually have these um, parts that actually move like this, that are detached, but actually are able to control roll. Now, if you control roll, you have to change the, uh, the, the angle that each side of the wing. So this, if you wanted to roll the plane one way, you, this wing that's right here would have to actually be twisted a different way than the wing on the other side. So to control it, they kind of used what birds do. They, choose, they chose wing warping. So there's wires that are inside the, um, the cloth here, inside the aircraft. And using the hip cradle right where the pilot would sit, as he adjusts his body, as he adjusts his uh, hips, going left, right, or forward, or back, it would actually adjust the angle that these wings were attached to. So if he wanted to roll to one side to start to turn, all he had to do was shift his hips to the side. And then those would have pulled the wires, which would bend the, the wings a certain way to make it happen. So that's what wing warping is. Wires inside the, uh, the wings that can actually bend them. Now today we don't use that. We use little parts of the wings that are detached, but that's what they used back then. Now, one of the last key innovations that they made to this aircraft before it took flight was the rudder. So back when they were doing early glider uh, test flights, they had a rudder that was fixed in position because they, didn't, because they knew that they needed to have something for extra stability. But they actually realized that that didn't give them much control and they were always spinning out and kind of falling. So they made the rudder movable. And you know how they did that? They attached the wires that make the rudder move to the hip cradle. So as you're adjusting the uh, wing uh, warping of the, of the aircraft's wings, you're actually adjusting the rudder. So the rudder is kind of connected to the wings. So when you're turning one way, when you're turning one way, if I want to go left, you're going to roll left, but then the rudder is also going to turn to allow you to make even more of a sharper angle turn. One last feature of the aircraft. So to take off in the sand, you have to have large wheels, or in this case, the brothers, they didn't really have any. So they installed this rail here that's made out of wood. And on top of this wooden rail is actually a metal strip. So they would actually connect the aircraft to with this strip so that when it gains speed with its propellers, it would actually smoothly glide across the sand. But how does it go? How does it stay on that? Well, there's this little wooden piece that would actually connect to the bottom of the aircraft. And below it is actually is a bicycle hub. And that bicycle hub is made of metal. And with that metal strip on the top of the wood, with that, uh, with that being attached to the bottom of the aircraft, that little hub, there's two, there's two little uh, hubs there, would actually travel like small wheels across the, the, tr the rail. And there was one more small hub attached to the elevator. And with all those attachments, as the flyer took flight on its first ever, it moved cleanly across the ground. And when uh, Orville took flight and pulled the elevator, it cleanly took off the ground. And that's how they took flight. Now let's head out to exactly where the flights happened. So now that we're outside, I can show you exactly where the Wright brothers flew. So right over here, we have the two cabins or sheds or hangars where they stored the aircraft and built them and they lived. And then that stone over there marks where they took off on their, four, on their first four flights on December 17th. And then the marker there is the first flight or that's where the first flight landed. Then the second marker there is where the second one landed, the third marker, the third flight. And then all the way down the field at the end is where the fourth marker is where they took their fourth flight. And their first four flights happened in about 90 minutes. They were quick. But to see the progress that they made from that first flight all the way down to the fourth flight is incredible. Now, unfortunately, after the fourth flight, the airplane uh, was destroyed. But all of that progress in one day, amazing. So let's actually walk out to where they took flight. So I'm standing in front of one of the two reproduction hangars that the Wright brothers lived in, but also worked on their aircraft. So this cabin right here houses a fireplace, a table to uh, live at, and just, you know, the necessary needs to have a little bit of a comfortable life out here when there was no one living out here in um, the Outer Banks. So in the back, there's actually a workstation, which you can see right here. And you can see where they would adjust the wing or put the aircraft back together because they shipped it out here in pieces after building it in Dayton, Ohio. So this is the, um, the first shed they built. And since this shed was not big enough to hold the fully assembled aircraft, they had to build a second one that was actually large enough to hold the 1903 Flyer and further subsequent ones. So let's walk inside. No, I haven't. No, I've seen the 
So this is the hangar. And this is where the exact 1903 flyer was once held. Now, of course, this is the reproduction, but we re this is um, the reproduction, but this is exactly where that second hangar was. And look how big it is. It's actually amazing. And to think them being all here, out here alone with just their flying machine and having to take care of it by themselves, it's just crazy, but Wow. And actually they abandoned them when they were done uh, flying their aircraft out here and then the original sheds were um, worn down and destroyed. But this is it. This is where it was. Now let's go and look at the flight line where their first four flights took place. So this is where it all happened. The right flyer was once sitting on this rail. This is a reproduction, but you remember there's the wooden or the metal strap on the top and then the rest is made of wood. And then the dolly that carried it would glide across this uh, metal um, strip. So this is the rail. The aircraft once stood here. Now let's go right over to the stone where the first ever powered flight took place. So with this stone monument marks where exactly the Wright brothers took flight. They took off right around here on their rail and then they took flight for, or Orville took flight for 12 seconds heading down to that first stone, which is where they landed. And it's just amazing. This is where it happened in 1903, about over a hundred years ago. So they took flight here off this rail. Let's walk down to where they first landed. This is where they first landed on the first flight that changed history and really smart started the age of modern aviation. So the distance was 120 feet. They took or Orville took flight for 12 seconds and then the aircraft landed intact luckily. So that was at 10:35 a.m. Now they actually rolled the aircraft back and a little bit later they took off for the second flight. And since Orville took the first flight, Wilbur took the second. So let's walk to the second flight landing. So this is where the second flight landed, the second flight in history where it was uh, the, the powered flight. So Wilbur landed here and he flew for the same distance or the same time for 12 seconds and then he flew 175 feet. So the same day, only about an hour later. And then they rolled the aircraft back for a third flight, which Orville took flight again. So let's walk to the third monument. And right here is where the third flight landed. And it traveled for 15 seconds, Orville traveled for, for 15 seconds and went around 200 feet. And then they landed and then they rolled the aircraft back one more time to take flight for a fourth and final one at around 12 p.m. So let's walk to the fourth and final landing. And this is where their fourth and final flight landed. It was piloted by Wilbur and he flew for 59 seconds, around a minute, and landed 100 or 852 feet from where he took off. Now, this is really amazing. The first powered flight happened literally an, two hours before, the, before they went literally flying for a minute. Crazy jump in time. Now, the unfortunate part is the 1903 flyer, which they made these four flights in in one day, as they were rolling it back to those hangars all the way over there, a huge gust of wind grabbed the, um, as they were rolling it, a huge gust of wind grabbed the flyer and flipped it and landed it on its back, which completely destroyed it beyond repair. Now, the brothers, of course, they had just done the fourth or the four, the first four powered flights in history. So they were unbelievably joyed. But that was the end of their adventures for this year. So they packed up the flyer, sent it home, and they left here. And amazing. So if you just look back, you can just appreciate how much progress was made on that day, December 17th, 1903. Now, thank you so much for watching. I'm John Williams with Space Intelligence. And of course, the only reason we went to space was because the Wright brothers, they were the pioneers of getting us off the ground. And of course, we eventually landed on the moon. Anyway, thank you for your time. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe check out another one and just have a great day. Our mission is to make you space intelligent.